Congratulations, gentlemen, for another successful season of Letter Kenny. Thank, Thank you. you. When you guys started this project years ago, did you think it was going to be this big or even popular on this side of the border? <laughs> we, when we first did it, um, we had no idea that this was going to happen. We, we joked season one, it was this new streaming service in Canada here where many Canadians weren't even familiar with the streaming service. So we didn't really know what the future had in store for us, but we knew we were having a lot of fun. We knew we were making funny episodes and we joked that this was the best summer camp that any of us have ever been to. So we wanted to make sure we got to go to a, a second summer camp. And then when we got renewed for the third season and then the Hulu purchase came, the like the show took on a whole other life of its own. And uh, I don't think anyone's able to predict that we would be doing 60 something episodes. And uh, of course, pre COVID we were heading out on our North American wide letter Kenny live tour. And if that was, something you would have told me during season one, I would have laughed <laughs> my freaking head off. Um, yeah. So no one could have predicted this. Uh, we're very, very happy to be along for the ride. When the Americans um, gravitated towards our show, it was this huge surge of uh, fanship and followers. Um, and we are very, very happy to have everyone along for the ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How, when, when you guys first started, and you guys had to dance, how much uh, rehearsal or dancing that uh, you guys actually uh, did for yourself to, to get it down pat? Well, I mean, those, the, first, uh, the first time we got a reference for the dancing was the underground goth dance. If you've ever seen it, it's the one under the underpass and all the goths doing the arm things. Uh, Kiso sent us that video and he's like, oh, could you guys do something like this? And so, uh, on the day we show up, this is, there's no rehearsal, there's no anything. Someone comes out with a tiny speaker, like a portable Bose speaker type thing, starts playing some wild EDM and they're like, okay, go for it. And that was our uh, introduction to being skids. That first dance you see is us all individually uh, letting loose. And then progressively throughout the seasons in the show, we actually started to choreograph, choreograph a little bit of stuff and then have maybe like half an hour before we started shooting to organize something. Um, but initially it was all just uh, our instincts, we'll call them. Our, uh, Did you mention our... the YouTube video that he sent us? Did you mention that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that was a huge inspiration yeah. for us. And then, like you said, we let loose. And Evan actually should be credited for choreographing a couple of our dance numbers there. He's He's a, he's a b-boy, that's the right term? Like sure, a, you can call it that. We, I, I was a break dance for many years, and then now dance. in the show, I get to use it. Yeah, he's a break dance for many years. He's, very, he's a very, very good dancer. I did some musicals in high school. I took a dancing class, so I, and I love dancing, so it was really fun for us. Uh, then it became like this crazy part of the skids, and now we just dance in every single scene. So it's, it's, the music is part of us. Yeah, even if we're not supposed to dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love your two characters so much beca because uh, one of the things that, that I found it fascinating is um, Stuart and Roald has changed so much since the very first season. Could you talk, uh, talk about that? Because out of all the characters, everyone's pretty much the same except for you two. And are there going to be a true romantic relationship between the two? <laughs> Ty, what do you think? Well, uh, those are two different questions. Um, the first question, uh, we've certainly- grown. Yes to both. <laughs> <laughs> yes and yes, next question. Um, we, uh, you know, we were the outsiders, the, 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 the bottom of the hierarchy, we were in the basement and we were never allowed to leave. Then we became, um, you know, sort of the underdogs. People actually were rooting for us for a while. And uh, then Stuart had that relationship with uh, Sarah Gaddon's character, Gay, and then we went to the city that Hicks had to save us. And now all of a sudden we're in the main group and they're inviting us to, to parties and we're having beers with them. And uh, like you say, the skids have gone through probably more of an evolution than some of the other characters. And we have no idea what the future holds. As far as Rolb and Stuart's relationship, I think they're very good friends with perhaps a little bit of manipulation uh, involved, but uh, I don't see them. I don't see them uh, uh, becoming romantically linked. Let's but. just say they're life partners. Let's just let's I feel let, like let's I, let Evan I, say I, they're life partners. <laughs> <laughs> no, they love each other more than more more than enough, probably. Yeah. Yeah, more than lovers would. <laughs> let's be real. 
Tyler, do you, do you do you hold it back your laughter when Evan tries to uh, flirt with you on set as as Rolf? <laughs> I hold back my anger. <laughs> no, Evan Tyler and, doesn't like when I'm uh, showing him up on camera. Yeah, like, are you making so me <laughs> all of my lead? <laughs> I did not okay this. Yeah, I get that talk. No, Evan's great. He makes me laugh all the time. He, uh, it's it's nice too because now we're very comfortable with each other. So if he does a weird sound or a weird movement, I will either mirror it or react to it. And same thing with me. If I say something, he might mimic me or try to emulate me and. And, and then all of a sudden, we, we have a little scene within a scene amongst ourselves. Always Just, trying to emulate you, buddy. Yeah, I understand. Always. <laughs> you <talking> characters or? <laughs> Tyler, how many, how many wigs and hats do, you, are you, uh, do they actually have you try on through the sets? Have you seen the show Shit's Creek? No, I have not. Is that... Well, um, Moira, um, Catherine O'Hara's character, has a wall full of wigs. So I was going to make a Shit's Creek joke, but clearly that won't fly. Um, season one, I had this awful wig. It was made of a garbage bag cut into pieces, and it was very hot. And then season three, they they put this brand new, I have no idea how much it's worth, but they let me know that I'm not allowed to have it. Exactly. Yeah, you're not allowed to mess it up. And yeah. you would. He always wants to take it off at lunch. Nuh-uh. <laughs> yeah, well... So, so to answer your question, I've got two wigs. One's much better than the other, and I probably have three or four uh, dollar store hats. <laughs> so. That's it's like that's the skeleton a, at the dollar store from like a Halloween decoration. Exactly. They just like took it off. Yeah, it's stupid now. <laughs> this is excellent. Well, hey, both of you. Hey, thank you very much uh, for uh, for thank this you. interview. I really appreciate it. I. I can't wait to see where, you know, the next adventure of Stuart and Rold actually goes from here. <laughs> Neither can we. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it.